All right, hallelujah. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world. This is Pastor Dow. And I am here. Um, going to let this be the last of this series on the Sabbath day. Um, now, what I suggest is um, that if you're led by the Holy Spirit, is that you ought to burn a DVD of this particular series right here, make a bunch of them, and hand them out to people and let them have the opportunity to go outside of their religion and at least get a chance to hear the truth that's coming from these holy scriptures right here. But this is the last about the Sabbath day that I'm going to do, uh, and no doubt I have not um, done it what you would call a comprehensive study of it, but I thought this is a good entry level of understanding of the reason why that we keep the Sabbath day. Now, I am here to promote the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Anytime a minister avoids a subject, it can always be attributed to fear. That's what you can always like it to. Preachers are uh, perceived in our society um, as the defenders of truth and the pillars of the community. Um, so we have a high standard to uphold and we should show extreme honor and respect uh, for all our brothers and sisters um, who have gone on before us in our heritage. Um, now the fact is is that Yahweh does not change the most high God does not change as a matter of fact the scripture says in Psalms 89 34 my covenant I will I not break nor alter or change anything that has gone out of my lips so whatever the most high has come out of his lip whether people have heard it themselves he's not going to alter and change it so if any man any religion any philosophy any tradition any teaching or idea that speaks contrary to what the one true most high says then you might as well let them be a curse because that's exactly what they're going to be now second timothy three sixteen says for all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is proper for doctrine uh, for reproof for correction and instruction in righteousness um, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And Malachi 3, 6 says, uh, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, my quest is always in respect of honoring the truth and not to bury it. Uh, keep in mind that we have been trained and not educated. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you can read the Bible and clearly see a subject at hand and it's sitting right there in front of you and yet believe something else, uh, you've been trained and manipulated and not educated and that is a fact so here's the understanding um, and only a pastor that is called by the most high can give understanding in reference to this subject first of all number one you have to be a Hebrew Israelite in order to understand these scriptures you have that's the only way you can be a teacher because we are the ones charged by the most high to actually go out and, and give this gospel out to the nations now, we're going to go to Exodus, the 24th chapter, in your scriptures right here, of the 12th verse. And let's read. And we're going to read it as pertaining to the King James, or the wording that, that says that is um, given to us in the King James Version. Exodus 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law of commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Now, in Deuteronomy 5.22, these words, the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the mist, out of the mist of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness with a great voice. So, the Most High spoke to Israel in the mount, out of the fire, in a thick dark cloud, um, and a great voice. Now watch this. And he added no more. In other words, whatever he had spoke, and because we know that those are the ten commandments, they're not ten suggestions, they're ten commandments. And the scripture say he added no more. And he wrote them on two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. And that me is Moses. Now, we're going to go to the record itself in Exodus 20, um, verse 8, and we're going to read uh, the law of the Sabbath that has never been altered. Or has never changed. That's what the Most High said. Anything that has gone out of his lips, according to Psalms 89:34, and this is good understanding. 
Now, Exodus 20, starting verse 8, this is the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. <clears throat> thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, or nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, of uh, the sea and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And that is the fourth commandment. Now, Exodus 31, verse 12, turn into your scriptures to Exodus 31, verse 12, and let's get a little bit more understanding here, and listen to the book. This is what it says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, so the Most High, Yahweh himself, did the speaking, and this is what he said to Moshe. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel. He didn't tell you to speak to the Christians, to the Greeks, to the Romans, to the Europeans, or to the Muslims, to the Hindus, nobody else. This covenant is a covenant law only for the Israelites who are Hebrews. Uh, speak also and speak thou also to the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. So the Sabbath day is a sign given to the children of Israel, setting us apart to show that he alone has picked us, chose us, and has sanctified us away from the pagans and the heathens in this world. So if you don't keep the Sabbath, you don't have a sign up on you that you are a peculiar people. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you, and every one that defileth shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And no doubt many of you people are automatically cut off from the Israelites because you're teaching another perspective, another ideal, another philosophy, another traditions of men or, or, or something that's totally contrary to what's written in this book. You will not find the approval of Sunday in this Bible. You will not find where the Most High, Jesus, Moses, Paul, anybody change these scriptures. They have not been altered. They have never been repealed. So you've got to do some serious major tap dancing, twisting, distorting, and warping of these, these scriptures right here in order to try to uh, bend Sunday out of this Bible. It's impossible. Uh, but nevertheless, people try it anyway. Um, and then verse 15 in Exodus 31, six days may work be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. See, the Sabbath is rest. The issue is not what day you worship. You are to worship the Father every day. The issue is the day of rest. Are you going to obey the creator of the universe and what he said? Or are you going to obey what your preacher says? Or are you going to obey what your church says? Or are you going to obey what your traditions of men say? Now as for me and my house... We are going to serve the Most High. That's what, and that's what we always have done. Um, so six days make work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy unto the Lord, and whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he says, surely put, be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. So our, our ancestors and those, and, and, and those people who are ancestors 4,000, 2,000, 4,000 years ago when they was doing this Sabbath day, 2,000 years ago with the giving of the commandments, um, this is supposed to follow us all the way down throughout our generations. It has never been repealed, never been done away with. And then he goes on to say, for a perpetual covenant, that means an everlasting covenant. It's ongoing, continuing. Not only that, the prophets even attest that we're going to be keeping this Sabbath even in the kingdom. All right. And it says in verse 17, for it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. You see, God didn't come and make a covenant with the Christians and, and with all the other nations. If you read Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 36 and Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10, you'll find out clearly that they harmonize, that they, this covenant is clearly for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
says that in the prophets, you go over to the new covenant, to the house of Israel, and to the house of Judah. The covenant is not for anybody else. Strangers can be joined to this, meaning Gentile heathens or Hellenists can come back into covenant. Those of you who are Greek speaking Hebrews, uh, who've learned languages and cultures of other nations, you can come back in. Um, but we, that seems to be the problem today. We want to be called by proverbs and by words such as uh, Christian uh, and, and all these other names and stuff, which we was never ever given. It was never given to us by the Most High, and it was never our label coming from Father Abraham. What was Abraham? Was not our father Abraham a Hebrew? Anyway, well, I'm going to talk more about that later on in another video. And anyway... Uh, it says it's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For on six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. You see, that's answer another question too, because see, over in Colossians, um, it tells you blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and took it out of the way and nailing it to the tree. Now what that is, is, is that everything that was placed on the outside the Ark of the Covenant and stuff, those were considered handwritings. But the Father wrote with his own finger. There's a difference between hand and finger, but hey, anyway. Well, anyway, in other words, um, the judgment of death is on each and every single person um, because anyone who refuses to keep the Sabbath day or any of the commandments, you automatically have the judgment of death upon you from the Most High. Um, and, and, and you really don't understand what grace is. Now, let me give you an example of, of what grace is. Now, grace is, is that you're not receiving the penalty that is due to you for being lawless, workers of iniquity, and law-breaking, and teaching people to break the law because judgment is not executed speedily. See, it used to be a time under the covenant, uh, the old covenant, that if you broke the Sabbath, all the congregation of Israel directly coming from the mouth of the Most High would stone you to death and kill you on the spot. And so now we're in this dispensation of time, and hey, the sentence is still death. Remember, the Father's not going to alter nor change anything that has gone out of his lips. The sentence of death is still there. Well, I'm willing, more than willing to come back, you know, come and sit down with any preacher, minister, elder, anybody, and have a civil conversation about this subject. Uh, we must always remember um, Acts 5.29 um, that we ought to obey God rather than man. And again, as always, our state religion does not ever expect for you to go outside of its boundaries and to cultivate and nourish knowledge within yourself um, to know what the truth is. Now, my question to you is, do we conceal the truth or do we reveal the truth? I personally believe that we reveal the truth, uh, realizing that truth always heals. Truth never kills. Uh, truth always, always heals. It never kills. Um, so rather than us focusing on those leaders who are blind and not interested in telling the truth at all, I think that we should be listening to those who are actually sticking with this book and refuse to deviate from the course that it is already set. And if we don't continue to do this, and if we don't uh, press on into the kingdom with obedience, pure obedience to the most high, our future is even more bleak than what our past has always been. Now you often heard me use the word self-autonomy, and I think we need to use that uh, more than anything. Now let me define to you what self-autonomy is. Self-autonomy is the ability to exercise independent thinking in the pursuit of happiness and the freedom to determine self-predestination. That's the reason why we do these videos so that you can have another opportunity to hear something other than what your, your training and your institutions and your churches have been telling you. And then you exercise your own ability to discern if you're hearing the truth or not. And anyway, we hope that the king um, blesses you, 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 and you. Um, if you want to know um, what's going on, you can read Numbers 15. Um, verses 30 through 36 and hey it'll let you know what happened to someone that broke the Sabbath alright um, so don't get deceived by different perspectives different philosophies uh, different traditional beliefs distortions and ideas don't, don't let those things mess you up now you think if a subject doesn't make any difference then why come it always upset us so much when it's bought up the king is coming